Hello, my name is Brooke Lux and I'm a student at Ohio University Lancaster and this is my presentation for the Book in a Box project. So I decided to do my project on the book Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. I love this book because I also have a name rooted in nature, Brooke, the babbling stream. I also have a three-year-old daughter with her middle name, Rosalie. So I just really love anything floral related. So this is my box. I wrapped it with floral wrapping paper to go off the chrysanthemum theme of being a flower. I decorated the top with a copy of the book and fake flowers. <laughs> and then on the sides, I did different scenes to the book. On the side is the first page where it talks about Chrysanthemum and how she got her name from her parents. This side is about Miss Twinkle and how she helps Chrysanthemum be proud of her name. And the back is when Chrysanthemum feels proud of her name and excited. And this is the end of the book where it talks about how well she did in her school play and how Miss Twinkle named her daughter Chrysanthemum. This is my teaching win. My first lesson was science and music and this was a nature walk and on the nature walk they would be able to explore different flowers and how they grow and they could collect materials to bring inside the classroom to further investigate and we also would do a song called the flowers growing song where they could do hand motions like this is the way we sprout our leaves and fun things like that to get them doing something with music along with their science activity. The next lesson I have is literacy and dance and movement. And for this one, I decided to do a chrysanthemum retelling where first we would talk about the book and I would ask the students to tell me who the main characters are, what happens in the story, what are the sequence of events. But every time that I read Chrysanthemum in the book, they would get up and do a dance. And we're tying this in with the book because throughout the story she feels sad about being teased about her name, but she feels proud and happy about her name and nervous about school. So it would be fun for the kids to dance according to whatever emotion they think that she is according to the words when I say her name. The next lesson I did was math and art. And for this, I decided to do a name graph. So we would go around the class and obviously see how many letters are in all of our names. I did make a prop for this. Um, this is just an example how many letters are in our name and on the side we have number of people and then number of letters. I just based this on um, my household. Brooke has six letters. My daughter Audrey has six letters. My grandpa Tim has three. My grandma Bonnie six and it just goes on and on. So as you can see like we would be able to place stars with how many letters their names had and then we could compare and contrast when we read the data. So there's that. And then whoop, the art part to go along with that would be that I would encourage the kids to make their own name tags where we would have paint and glitter and crayons and just anything that they want to create where they would write their name out and then they would decorate the name tag and then we would stick that name tag along with their picture on their cubby so that they would have it labeled and easy to find with something that they created themselves. And my final lesson would be social studies with sensory play. And for this, I did the meaning of our name. So we would go around the room in a small group setting and I would explain to the students how our names have history and origins and meaning, which to a kindergartner might be a little much, but hopefully there would be kind of like a one word that would describe their name. Like for me, brook means a babbling brook or a stream. So we would go around the room and talk about what their names mean. 
And then in the book, Chrysanthemum, she talks about how her favorite food is macaroni and cheese with ketchup. So to go along with social studies, I wanted to create a sensory table or bin to represent this. And I made that as well as my second thought. Obviously, this is in the classroom. I'd have a lot more macaroni. But in my sensory bin, I have cooked macaroni, elbow macaroni. I have wooden spoons, um, clay pots and pans, measuring cups. And then to represent the ketchup, I have red stars. And to represent the cheese, I have yellow. So then the kids could kind of like play with this. And before I would ask them like, what do you think this is? What do you think this represents? And then as a class, I'd really like to make macaroni and cheese with ketchup so that they would get to have a snack that goes along with the book and just have something fun. So that is my project, my four lesson plans, my teaching web, and my two props. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching.